dear friends in Christ, on this most holy evening, when our Lord Jesus Christ passed from death to life, the Church invites her children throughout the world to come together in vigil and prayer. This is the Passover of the Lord. If we honour the memory of his death and resurrection by hearing his word and celebrating his ministries, his mysteries, then we may be confident that we shall share his victory over death and live with him forever in God. Now let us pray. Father, we share in the light of your glory through your Son, the light of the world. Make this new fire holy and inflame us with new hope. Purify our minds by this Easter celebration and bring us one day to the feast of eternal light. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Christ, yesterday and today, the beginning and the end, the Alpha and Omega, all times belongs to him and all ages, to him be glory and power through every age and forever. Amen. By his holy and glorious wounds may Christ our Lord guard us and keep us. Amen.
Christ our light. Thanks be to God. Christ our light. Thanks be to Christ our light, thanks be to God. Rejoice, O heavenly powers, sing choirs of angels, exalt all creation around God's throne. Jesus Christ, our King, is risen. Sound the trumpet of salvation. Rejoice, O heart, in shining splendor, radiant in the brightness of your King. Christ has conquered, glory fills you. Darkness vanishes forever. Rejoice, O Mother Church, exalt in glory. The risen Saviour shines upon you. Let his place resound with joy, echoing the mighty song of all God's people. My dearest friend, standing with me in this holy light, join me in asking God for mercy that he may give his unworthy minister grace to sing his Easter praises. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Lift up your hearts, we lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is truly right that with full hearts and minds and voices we should praise the unseen God, all-powerful Father, and his only Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. For Christ has ransomed us with his blood and paid for us the price of Adam's sin to our eternal Father. These are Passover feasts when Christ the true Lamb was slain whose blood consecrates 
the homes of all believers. Feast the night when first you saved our fathers. You freed the people of Israel from their slavery and let them dry short through the sea. This is the night which the pillar of fire destroyed the darkness of sin. This is the night when Christians everywhere washed clean of sin and free from all defilement and restored to grace and grow together in holiness. This is the night when Jesus Christ broke the chain of death and rose triumphant from the grave. What good would life have been to, to us had Christ not come as a Father, how wonderful your care for us, how boundless your merciful love to ransom a slave you gave away your son. Oh, oh happy folk, O necessary sin of Adam, which gained for us so great a redeemer. Most blessed of all night, chosen by God to see Christ rising from the dead. Of this night, Scripture says, the night will be clear as day, it will become my light, my joy. The power of this holy night dispel all evil, washes guilt away, restores lost innocence, brings mourners to joy. It casts out hatred, brings us peace, and humbles earthly pride. Night truly blessed, which heaven is wedded to us, and man is reconciled with God. Therefore, heavenly Father, in the joy of this night, receive our evening sacrifice of praise, your church's solemn offering. Accept this Easter candle of flame, divided, bond undimmed, a pillar of fire that grows to the honour of God. Let it mingle with the light of heaven and continue bravely burning to dispel the darkness of this night. May the morning star which never sets find this flame still burning. Christ, that morning star, who came back from the dead and shed his peaceful light on all mankind, your Son, who lives and reigns forever and ever.
The first reading is taken from the book of Genesis. In the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth, the earth was a formless void, and darkness covered the face of the deep, while a wind from God swept over the face of the waters. Then God said, Let there be light, and there was light. And God saw that the light was good, and God separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And there was evening, and there was morning the first day. And God said, Let there be a dome in the midst of the waters, and let it separate the waters from the waters. So God made a dome and separated the waters that were under the dome from the waters that were above the dome. And it was so good. God called the dome sky, and there was evening, and then there was morning the second day. And God said, Let the waters under the sky be gathered together into one place, and let the dry land appear. And it was so. God called the dry land earth, and the waters that were gathered together he called seas. And God saw that it was good. Then God said, Let the earth put forth vegetation, plants yielding seed, the fruit trees every kind on earth that bear fruit with the seed in it. And it was so. The earth brought forth vegetation, plants yielding seed of every kind, and trees of every kind bearing fruit with the seed in it. And God saw that it was good. And there was evening, and there was morning the third day. And God said, Let there be lights in the dome of the sky, to separate the day from the night. And let them be for signs, and for seasons, and for days and years. And let them be lights in the dome of the sky, to give light upon the earth. So it was so. God made the two great lights, the greater light to rule the day, and the lesser light to rule the night and the stars. God set them in the dome of the sky, to give light upon the earth, to rule over the day and over the night, and to separate the light from the darkness. And God saw that it was good. And there was evening, and there was morning, the fourth day. And God said, Let the waters bring forth swarms of living creatures, and let the birds fly above the earth across the dome of the sky. So God created the great sea monsters, and every living creature that moves, of every kind with which the waters swarm, and every winged bird of every kind. And God saw that it was good. God blessed them, saying, Be fruitful, and multiply, and fill the waters in the seas, and let birds multiply on the earth. And there was evening, and there was morning, the fifth day. And God said, let the earth bring forth living creatures of every kind, cattle and creeping things, and wild animals of the earth of every kind. And it was so. God made wild animals of earth of every kind, and the cattle of every kind, and everything that creeps upon the ground of every kind. And God saw that it was good. Then God said, let us make humankind in our image according to our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the birds of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the wild animals of the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps upon the earth. So, God created humankind in his image. In the image of God, he created them. Male and female he created them. God blessed them, and God said to them, Be fruitful and multiply, and fill the earth and subdue it, and have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the birds of the air, and over every living thing that moves upon the earth. God said, See, I have given you every plant yielding seed that is upon the face of all the earth, and every tree with seed in its fruit. 
you shall have them for food, and to every beast of the earth, and to every bird of the air, and to everything that creeps on the earth, everything that has the breath of life. I have given every green plant for food. And it was so. God saw everything that he had made, and indeed it was very good. And there was evening and there was morning the sixth day. Thus the heavens and the earth were finished, had all their multitude. And on the seventh day God finished the work that he had done. And he rested on the seventh day for all the work that he had done. So God blessed the seventh day and hallowed it, because on it God rested from all the work that he had done in creation. These are the generations of the heavens and the earth when they were created. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And response to the psalm, send forth your spirit and renew the face of the earth. Send forth your spirit and renew the face of the earth. Bless the Lord, O my soul. O Lord, my God, how excellent is your greatness. You are clothed with majesty and honour, wrapped in light as in a garment. Send forth your spirit and renew the face of the earth. You spread out the heavens like a curtain and lay the beams of your dwelling place in the waters above. You make the clouds your chariot and ride on the wings of the wind. Send forth your spirit and renew the face of the earth. You lay the foundation of the earth that it never should move at any time. You covered it with a deep like a garment. The waters stood high above the hills. Send forth your spirit and renew the face of the earth. And let us pray. Almighty God, you have created the heavens and the earth and made us in your own image. Teach us to discern your hand in all your works and your likeness in all your children. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Amen. And the second reading is from the book of Exodus. As Pharaoh drew near, the Israelites looked back, and there were the Egyptians advancing on them. In great fear, the Israelites cried out to the Lord. They said to Moses, Was it because there were no graves in Egypt that you have taken us away to die in the wilderness? What have you done to us? Bring us out of Egypt. Is this not the very thing we told you in Egypt? Let us alone and let us serve the Egyptians. For it would have been better for us to serve the Egyptians than to die in the wilderness. But Moses said to the people, Do not be afraid, stand firm, and see the deliverance that the Lord will accomplish for you today. For the Egyptians whom you see today, you shall never see again. The Lord will fight for you, and you have only to keep still. Then the Lord said to Moses, why, you do, why do you cry out to me? Tell the Israelites to go forward. But you lift up your staff and stretch out your hand over the sea and divide it, that the Israelites may go into the sea on the dry ground. Then I will harden the hearts of the Egyptians so that they will go in after them. And so I will gain glory for myself over Pharaoh and all his army, his chariots and his chariot drivers. 
and the Egyptians shall know that I am the Lord. When I have gained glory for myself over Pharaoh, his chariots and his chariot drivers. The angel of God, who was going before the Israelite army, moved and went behind them. And a pillar of cloud moved from in front of them and took its place behind them. It came between the army of Egypt and the army of Israel. And so the cloud was there with the darkness, and it lit up the night. One did not come near the other all night. Then Moses stretched out his hand over the sea. The Lord drove the sea back by a strong east wind all night, and turned the sea into dry land. And the waters were divided. The Israelites went into the sea on dry ground, the waters forming a wall for them on their right and on their left. The Egyptians pursued and went into the sea after them, all of Pharaoh's horses, chariots and chariot drivers. At the morning watch, the Lord in the pillar of fire and cloud looked down upon the Egyptian army and threw the Egyptian army into panic. He clothed their chariot wheels so that they turned with difficulty. The Egyptians said, Let us flee from the Israelites, for the Lord is fighting for them against Egypt. Then the Lord said to Moses, Stretch out your hand over the sea, so that the water may come back upon the Egyptians, upon their chariot, and chariot drivers. So Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and at dawn the sea returned to its normal depth. As the Egyptians fled before it, the Lord tossed the Egyptians into the sea. The waters returned and covered the chariots and the chariot drivers. The entire army of Pharaoh that had followed them into the sea. Not one of them remained. But the Israelites walked on dry ground through the sea, the waters forming a wall for them on their right and on their left. Thus the Lord saved Israel that day from the Egyptians. And Israel saw the Egyptians dead on the seashore. Israel saw the great work that the Lord did against the Egyptians. So the people feared the Lord and believed in the Lord and in his servant Moses. Then the prophet Miriam, the Aaron's sister, took a tambourine in her hand. And all the women went out after her with tambourines and with dancing. And Miriam sang to them, Sing to the Lord, for he has triumphed gloriously, horse and rider he has thrown into the sea. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And response to the psalm, I will sing to the Lord who has triumphed gloriously. I will sing to the Lord, who has triumphed gloriously. I will sing to the Lord, who has triumphed gloriously, the horse and his rider he has thrown into the sea. The Lord is my strength and my song, and has become my salvation. I will sing to the Lord, who has triumphed gloriously. This is my God whom I will praise the God of my forebearers, whom I will exalt. The Lord is a warrior, the Lord is his name. I will sing to the Lord, who has triumphed gloriously. Your right hand, O Lord, is glorious in power. Your right hand, O Lord, shatters the enemy. At the blast of your nostrils, the sea covered them. They sank as lead in the mighty waters. 
I will sing to the Lord who has triumphed gloriously. Let us pray. Lord God, our Redeemer, who heard the cry of your people and sent your servant Moses to lead them out of slavery. Free us from the tyranny of sin and death, and by the leading of your Spirit, bring us to our promised land. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And the third reading is from the book of Isaiah. Ho, everyone who thirsts, come to the waters, and you that have no money, come buy and eat. Come buy wine and milk without money and without price. Why do you spend your money for that which is not bread, and your labour for that which does not satisfy? Listen carefully to me, and eat what is good, and delight yourselves in rich food. Incline your ear, and come to me. Listen, so that you may live. I will make with you an everlasting covenant, my steadfast, sure love for David. See, I made him a witness to the peoples, a leader and commander for the peoples. See. You shall call nations that you do not know. And nations that do not know you shall run to you. Because of the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel. For he has glorified you. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake their way and the unrighteous their thoughts. Let them return to the Lord, that he may have mercy on them. And to our God, for he will abundantly pardon. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are your ways my ways, says the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. For as the rain and the snow come down from heaven, and do not return there until they have watered the earth, making it bring forth and sprout, giving seed to the sower and bread to the eater, so shall my word be that goes out from my mouth. It shall not return to me empty, but it shall accomplish that which I purpose, and succeed in the thing for which I sent it. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And response to the Son. With joy you will draw water from the wells of salvation. With joy you will draw water from the wells of salvation. Behold, God is my salvation. I will trust and will not be afraid. For the Lord God is my strength and my soul, and has become my salvation. With joy you will draw water from the wells of salvation. On that day you will say, Give thanks to the Lord, call upon his name. Make known his deeds among the nations. Proclaim that his name is exalted. With joy you will draw water from the wells of salvation. Sing God's praises, who has triumphed gloriously. Let this be known in all the world. Shout and sing for joy, you that dwell in Zion. For great in your midst is the Holy One of Israel. With joy you will draw water from the wells of salvation. 
Let us pray. Most merciful God, who by the death and resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, delivered and saved the world, grant that by faith in him who suffered on the cross, we may triumph in the power of his victory. Especially we pray for those who are in particular need. Pauline Staylors, Diana Jones, Doreen Flint, Barbara Baker, Ron Painter, Luke Sheehan, Claudia Bona, Violet Bockland, Susie Antonio, Emma Evans, Sue Lee, Father Alan Cross, Heather Anderson, Patricia Ray, Cheryl Williams, Mark, Jim Deakin. And we also pray for those who have gone before us and waiting for the day of their resurrection. Ken Parker, Michael Jenkins, Phil Shannon, John Mason, Charles Lemkin, Beatrice Boateng, Patrick Vignani, Jeff Housen. And also we pray for the souls of Alfred Hollingsworth, Edward May, Ivy Forbes, Edward Smith, Lily Bambury, Jackie Franklin, Andreas Dimitriou, and Christy Dimitriou, as is anniversary of death. Blessed are you, Lord God of our salvation. You quench the thirst of those who yearns for righteousness and satisfy the hunger of those who crave for justice. Lead your longing people back to peace. That with the mountains and hills we may burst into songs of joy. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Oh, 
let us pray. Lord of all life and power, who through the mighty resurrection of your Son overcame the old order of sin and death to make all things new in him, grant that we, being dead to sin and alive to you in Jesus Christ, may reign with him in glory, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be praised and honour, glory and might, now and all eternity. Amen. And a reading from the letter of Saint Paul to the Romans. Do you not know that all of us who have been baptised into Christ Jesus were baptised into his death. Therefore, we have been buried with him by baptism into death, so that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, so we too might walk in newness of life. For if we have been united with him in a death like his, we will certainly be united with him in a resurrection like his. We know that our old self was crucified with him, so that the body of sin might be destroyed, and we might no longer be enslaved to sin. For whoever has died is freed from sin. But if we have died with Christ, we believe that we will also live with him. We know that Christ, being raised from the dead, will never die again. Death no longer has dominion over him. The death he died, he died to sin, once for all. But the life he lives, he lives to God. So you also must consider yourselves dead to sin and alive to God in Christ Jesus. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Heaven. 
came and rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning, and his clothing white as snow. For fear of him, the guards shook and became like dead men. But the angel said to the women, Do not be afraid. I know that you are looking for Jesus, who was crucified. He is not here, for he has been raised, as he said. Come, see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples, He has been raised from the dead, and indeed he is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him. This is my message for you. So they left the tomb quickly, with fear and great joy, and ran to tell his disciples. Suddenly, Jesus met them and said, Greetings! And they came to him, took hold of his feet, and worshipped him. Then Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee. There they will see me. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. May I speak in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Happy Easter to, <laughs> to everyone. Happy Easter to you. And happy Easter to Helen. Ah, it's been a um, surreal experience um, this year. Of course, you know, each year, every single Holy Week, every single Easter is important. But this year, particularly, I feel great. Because um, despite all the difficulties, we managed um, to be here um, at this point to celebrate the Easter Vigil um, together. I think that has been the brave act of you, first of all, to tune in, not just um, sitting and doing um, you know, the personal things, but I think it's, it's, um, it's outcome of we working together as a member of this community. And not only for worship, but also for every other things that we do together. It is cooperative work. I believe that is what Jesus mentioned. He asked us to love one another and to serve one another. In order for us to serve each other and to love others, our neighbours, what shall we do? And I'm so proud um, and I'm so happy and humble to see these acts of love is happening here among us. The Easter message, the message of empty tomb, is a message of hope and strength to those who believe. You and I, we are the Christians, the follower of Jesus Christ. Following Jesus Christ doesn't necessarily mean we're doing something nice and wonderful. That's everybody can do that. What makes us different from others, including those who are doing wonderful work of charity, what makes us distinctive is this. We truly believe the event of resurrection. We believe in Jesus, not just his good work, his miracle, and all the fantastic words, all the parables, beautiful parables that he taught. We believe his resurrection. And we trust, as St. Paul said, we trust in his name. We died with him on the cross. We buried with him through our baptism. We will enjoy the resurrection with him. So my brothers and sisters, courage. 
like Moses said, stand firm and courage because the Lord will protect us and give us his blessing. Happy Easter to you all, my brothers and sisters. And may the Lord continually bless us. Amen. Now, my brothers and sisters, it is a time for us to renew our baptism, um, the baptismal vows. Sadly, we cannot do any baptisms. Um, my wife Helen and um, Miss Stephen, they're both baptised, so I can't actually baptise them again. Once baptised, it's done. But still, we can renew our baptismal, um, baptismal vows. We are going to use this font. And before I actually um, go and pour some water for this you know, renewal, just let me quickly check the microphones. Yes, that is firmly attached. Now I'm going to ask Stephen to come with me here and hold this candle straight. This candle. Yeah. Or Stephen, can you actually go and bring that stand to me? Come on. I think um, this will be a bit safer. In baptism, God calls us out of darkness into his marvellous light. To follow Christ means dying to sin and rising to new life with him. Therefore, I ask, do you reject the devil and all rebellion against God? I reject them. Do you renounce the deceit and corruption of evil? I renounce them. Do you repent of the sins that separate us from God and neighbour? I repent of them. Do you turn to Christ as a saviour? I turn to Christ. Do you submit to Christ as Lord? I submit to Christ. Do you come to Christ the way, the truth and the life? I come to Christ. May God, who has given you the desire to follow Christ, give you the strength to continue in the way. Amen. Praise God, who made heaven and earth, who keeps his promise forever. And let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. Almighty God, whose Son Jesus Christ was baptised in the river Jordan, we thank you for the gift of water to cleanse us and revive us. We thank you that through the water of the Red Sea, you led your people out of slavery to freedom in the promised land. And we thank you 
that through the deep waters of death you brought your Son and raised him to life in the triumph. Bless this water. that your servants, who are washed in it, may be made one with Christ in his death and in his resurrection, to be cleansed and delivered from all sin. Send your Holy Spirit upon them. Bring them to new birth in a household of faith, and raise them with Christ to full and eternal life. For all might, majesty, authority, and power are yours, now and forever. Amen. Now, my brothers and sisters, I ask you to profess the faith of the Church. Do you believe and trust in God the Father? I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. And do you believe and trust in his Son, Jesus Christ? I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe and trust in the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, and the resurrection of the body and the life everlasting. Amen. Almighty God, we thank you for our fellowship in the household of faith with all who have been baptised in your name. Keep us faithful to our baptism and so make us ready for that day when the whole creation shall be made perfect in your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. The risen Christ came and stood among his disciples and said, Peace be with you. Then they were glad when they saw the Lord. Alleluia. Alleluia. The peace of the risen Christ be always with you. And also with you. Alleluia. And I should say, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia.
the Lord be with you, and also with you. Lift up your hearts, we lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. Father, we give you thanks and praise through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your living Word, through whom you have created all things, who was sent by you in your great goodness to be our Saviour. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he too flesh, as your Son, Born of the Blessed Virgin, he left the earth and went about among us. He opened wide his arms for us on the cross. He put an end to death by dying for us and revealed the resurrection by rising to new life. So he fulfilled your will and one for you, a holy people. But chiefly are we bound to praise you, because you raised him gloriously from the dead. For he is true Paschal Lamb, who was offered for us, and has taken away the sin of the world. By his death he has destroyed death, and by his rising to new life again he has restored to us every everlasting life. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name, forever praising you and singing. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and of your glory. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Lord, you are holy indeed, the source of all holiness. Grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit and according to your holy will, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, who in the same night that he was betrayed took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In 
the same way after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. And so, Father, calling to mind his death on the cross, his perfect sacrifice made once for the sins of the whole world, rejoicing in his mighty resurrection, and glorious ascension, and looking for his coming in glory, we celebrate this memorial of our redemption. As we offer you this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, we bring before you this bread and this cup, and we thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. Send the Holy Spirit on your people and gather into one in your kingdom all who share this one bread and one cup, so that we, in the company of Mary, the Virgin Mother of God, the Apostles, the Martyrs, Saint George and all the saints, may praise and glorify you forever, through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory be yours, Almighty Father, forever. Now rejoicing in God's new creation, as our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be. Thy kingdom come, I will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debt as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the
Jesus said, I am the bread of life. Whoever eats this bread will live forever. Lord, our hearts hunger for you. Give us this bread always. Hallelujah! Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia! We do not presume to come to this thy table, O mercy, Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in thy manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under thy table, but thou art the same Lord whose property is always have mercy. Grant us therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of thy dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that our sinful bodies may be made clean by his body, and our souls washed through his most precious blood, and that we may evermore dwell in him, and he in us. Amen. Let us pray. O God of life, who for our redemption gave your only begotten Son to the death of the cross, 
and by his glorious resurrection have delivered us from the power of our enemy. Grant us so to die daily to sin, that we may evermore live with him in the joy of his risen life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Please bow your head down for the God's blessing. God the Father, by whose love Christ was raised from the dead, open to you who believe the gates of everlasting life. Amen. And God the Son, who in bursting from the grave has won a glorious victory, give you joy as you share the Easter faith. Amen. And God the Holy Spirit, who filled the disciples with the life of the risen Lord, empower you and fill you with Christ's peace. Amen. And the blessing of God the Almighty, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, come down upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Go in the peace of Christ, Alleluia, Alleluia. Thanks be to God, Alleluia, Alleluia. I'm going to sing hymn number 503. Thine be the glory, risen conquering Son, endless feast of victory, thou o death hast won. Angels in bright raiment rolled a stone away, kept a folded grave.